So one thing I'm very conscious of at this point is that our BHAP feature only cares about the happy path. It's really nice that we can test that this data gets submitted in and if it's all good and valid, then we get back our 201. But what happens if the consumer of our API, maybe it's the front end person, makes a typo or submits the form data in some weird format? It'd be really handy if we could stop any sort of monkey business. Now this is a two part process. First, we need to ensure that our album entity enforces some validation constraints. This sounds rather computer science textbook, I guess, but in reality it means that, you know, don't be submitting nulls or can you please make sure that you submit a date within these two acceptable ranges or that sort of thing. It's actually pretty easy and it's quite intuitive with Symphony's validation constraints. I have a link to more in the show notes. Now, secondly, it would be really nice if we could return some nicely formatted errors to our JSON API consumer. And we're going to tackle that in the next video. Now, when we created our new Symphony 4 project, we based it off the Symphony skeleton. And that means that we do not have the Symphony validator currently installed. Now, if you based your project off the Symphony website skeleton, then you should already have the Symphony validator installed. To install the Symphony validator, simply run the command composer require Symphony validator. And we're done. So as it stands right now, could you tell me if we allow null values to be submitted? What about missing fields or empty strings? Is an empty string a null value? Can we submit a date to some crazy time in the future or some time in the past? This is just not tested. The actual behavior right now could be anything. And by not having a test, we're effectively saying we're okay with that. So we need to add in a whole bunch of extra tests. This is really good for catching edge cases and it gives us the extra confidence that our system is behaving as we expect. Now, in order to do so, we need to make our tests specific to this implementation. And that's fine, we just need to make sure we update our BHAT setup accordingly. So as the name implies, the default test suite runs by default. What I don't want to do is run all the Symphony 4 edge case tests whenever we run the default test suite. And the reason for this is that the Symphony 4 edge case tests won't be applicable if, for example, we're testing out a JavaScript implementation. Maybe the naming on this will need tweaking as we go further through this course. We shall have to wait and see. For now, this makes sense. Then we're going to define another test suite, this time the Symphony 4 edge cases. These use the same contexts, which means any of the original steps that we had in our default suite will be available when running the edge cases. But this time our filters ensure that we only run the Symphony 4 edge case tests. This means that any test inside the Symphony 4 edge case feature file will need to be tagged with the Symphony 4 edge case tag. Essentially, to summarize, the squiggly line or the tilde before our tag simply means that anything with that tag will be excluded by default. Likewise, in our Symphony 4 edge case suite, we only want to run scenarios that have been tagged with the expected Symphony 4 edge cases tag. Honestly, it's easier to see in action. So let's just do it. So I'm going to create a specific new feature file for testing our Symphony 4 JSON API's edge cases. Now the reason for this is that the Symphony form errors are quite verbose. Our JavaScript JSON API implementation will not use the same format. Neither will the API platform implementation. This is why we need to be specific. So I already have this in my clipboard, so I'm just gonna go ahead and paste this in. So our mission is to find out what happens currently and then decide if this is acceptable and then update the test to reflect this. It's not test-driven development as our tests are not actually driving our development. We're simply validating behavior and then changing where needed and effectively documenting how our Symphony 4 JSON API responds to bad circumstances. So let's try manually sending in a post request. So this should all work because that's what the tests are telling us and that's okay. And then if we try and delete the title and the sending what is in effect an empty string, then everything blows up, we get a massive 500 error. See if we can't see a little bit more about this, saying an exception occurred while inserting an album. And the problem was that we tried to insert a null title. Now this is good in a way. On one hand, Doctrine is saying, you know, I'm not gonna save this because the title is being seen as null. And if we look inside our application at the album entity, let's take a look at each of these properties. Implicitly, nullable is set to false. So we can actually override this and set this to be nullable to be true. We'd need to do a schema update in order for this to take effect, but that would allow us to have a nullable title column. 
Likewise, you can add nullable equals true to any of your other properties too. But the problem that we're experiencing where we're seeing this massive error is that we shouldn't even be able to get to the point where doctrine is trying to persist an entity that's in an invalid state. Unfortunately, we can define a validation constraint to say that a title cannot be blank. When we installed the Symphony Validator component, we gained access to a bunch of validation constraints. I've got a direct link to this in the show notes. But essentially, you just need to add these as annotations to your class properties. For example, in our case, we're going to use the not blank constraint. And there's various different options and so on that we can use, such as customizing the message that the user will see if the validation fails. Let's take a copy of that use statement there. And then we'll add this to our album entity. So drop in the use statement and then annotate the relevant property with a cert not blank. And now we'll try and send in that same test. You can see we're now just getting a 400 bad request with the status of error, which is fine. And what, why we get that is because we're hitting this block here where we say if false is equal to form is valid, then simply return our JSON response with a status of error and the 400 bad request. So this should be enough to give us a passing test. All we're checking is that when we send this data in to the album endpoint without the right title, that we see a 400 error and the status of error. So let's try testing that now. And we only want to run the Symphony 4 Edge Cases suite. So it says no scenarios. It looks like I've got the tag wrong there. So Symphony 4 Edge Case, I'm pretty sure it's Edge Cases. Yeah, so it's got to match up exactly. Okay, let's try it again. And we have a passing test. The thing is, this test passes, but the behavior isn't very good. Like, what was the error? We know because this is a specific test, but this may have failed on any of the other fields. Now, it'd be really nice if we could send back some helpful information like, you know, you cannot submit an empty string for the title field or this dates out of range or whatever. And if you've ever used Symphony's form component with Twig, then you've likely seen validation before and you know that this is possible. It's just not particularly easy when working with Symphony as a JSON API. But don't worry about this because that's exactly what we're going to get onto in the very next video. Now, before I finish up, we're going to add in a few more tests to cover a couple more edge cases. So I've already got these in my clipboard. I'm just going to paste them in, make sure that they've got the right tag. And we just want to check that the track count has to be greater than zero. It can't be a negative number. So maybe if I just tag this one with T at the moment, get rid of the tag of T on that one. This way, when we rerun our test, I can just say the tags of T only. It just means that we only run one test. You can see we're expecting to get back our 400, but we're getting a 201. And that's because we don't have a validation constraint on the track count at the moment which means any number, zero, minus five, 20, whatever, they're all valid numbers. So again, back on the album, I've already got the use statement. It's a generic one. I'm just gonna add in another validation constraint, this time on track count. So I'll say assert, and this one has to be greater than zero. Let's try the test again. And this time it looks good. Now if we take off the tags equals T, then we can run all the tests and we should have three passes. That looks good too. So I'd encourage you to play around with these validation constraints. They're super useful and they become even more useful as your application complexity inevitably grows. Again, check out the show notes for a direct link to all of the available validation constraints. And there's also another link in the show notes on testing the unhappy path specifically, which we've done in a different project. So as already mentioned, what would be a really nice improvement here would be to show some helpful error messages as to exactly what's going wrong. So let's get onto that in the very next video.